So the study that I'm going to talk about next is the use of ambulatory inhaled nitric oxide in patients with interstitial lung disease who are at risk of pulmonary hypertension. This is a study that I'm privileged to be the principal investigator of and the initial results from the first cohort were presented at the ATS this year in Dallas. Uh, the follow-up data from cohort one including more long-term uh, um, long therapy or extension therapy. So what the study looks at is specifically patients with various forms of interstitial lung disease, including uh, the various idiopathic interstitial pneumonias, chronic hypersensitivity pneumonitis, um, and looking at those who are on oxygen and then adding supplemental nitric oxide to these patients. The uh, potential value of nitric oxide is twofold. First of all, we know it's a therapy for pulmonary hypertension, and many of these patients, if they don't have pulmonary hypertension, are at risk of developing pulmonary hypertension or have exercise-induced pulmonary hypertension. And a second avenue whereby this therapy might be beneficial to patients is by improving ventilation perfusion matching. So what we showed is that for the, for the patients treated with ambulatory nitric oxide, and this was um, a double-blind randomized clinical control study, I think we, in the first cohort we had around 41 patients, and what we showed was um, an interesting endpoint that we used, and that's actigraphy. We showed that those patients who had ambulatory nitric oxide added improved their level of activity, specifically moderate to vigorous activity and this improved um, significantly in this uh, group of patients. Now, one might ask, what is moderate to vigorous activity? Most of it was moderate, and moderate activity is walking up the stairs, washing the dishes, just getting around the house, doing your basic activities of daily living. So there was a signal there, as well as overall activity uh, improved or was better than the placebo arm in patients who received ambulatory nitric oxide. What's also interesting is that in the open label extension, when the placebo patients got converted to ambulatory nitric oxide, whereas previously their, their activity levels were going down in the context of receiving placebo, their activity levels stabilized out. So they started to behave very much like the original treatment arm in terms of stability of their uh, activity level. So this is an ongoing program. Um, that was cohort one. After cohort one, we have completed enrollment now in cohort two, where we'll be giving patients a higher dose of the ambulatory nitric oxide, with activity monitoring once again being the primary endpoint. Hopefully, if that shows to be positive, then, this, then the study program will roll over to cohort three, which will be a pivotal phase three clinical study looking at ambulatory nitric oxide with activity monitoring being, being the primary endpoint. I think this uh, is a very uh, novel study from the standpoint that the FDA has also agreed that activity monitoring can be the primary endpoint and recognizes that this is a very good reflection, a very patient-centric uh, uh, endpoint. So hopefully we will get some exciting results from this and have something in addition to offer patients who have more advanced interstitial lung disease.